Hey, it's all with another video and ooh, look at me now with a nice snazzy camera. I hope it looks okay. Uh, but today I'm going to be talking about mobile gaming and Blizzard. Yeah, these are going to be my extended thoughts after Friday when I talked about it for a little bit. And so today I'm going to keep going with my expectations and how I feel about the mobile gaming industry and uh, along with addressing some of the comments and criticisms about it. And then finally kind of top it off with what I hope to expect from Blizzard. Uh, not exactly with like, hey, what kind of games are you going to come out with? But more on like a philosophical level, like what is going to be the best approach Blizzard should take uh, with mobile gaming? And I'm sure that many of you at home and elsewhere are thinking to themselves well just dump it don't do anything like that god so you you freaking blizzard mobile chill person so as you're downvoting and typing all that stuff out let me at least extend a bit of an olive branch uh and talk about uh what i'm not liking so much about the mobile industry um and and at least demonstrate my experience and knowledge on why things are the way they are Today's video is obviously going to be full of opinions, so thank you for pointing out to me that I'm wrong. That's the whole point of it, and I hope to at least have a discussion below that uh, talks about the industry. Mobile gaming to me is like the combination, or, or the marriage, of the Game Boy. Uh, as a platform, as well as uh, like the Steam Marketplace with all the games and stuff. However, unlike the Game Boy and the Steam platform, uh, these open markets that we're seeing on like the Google Play Network and the Apple Store, it's like they're heavily unregulated. It's like the wild, wild west out there. Not to say that Nintendo nor Steam have had perfect games that have come out all the time, like they don't poop gold. And as a whole, the gaming industry is not what I would consider young. However, the mobile gaming, you know, these marketplaces are considered a new frontier. A very recent article that I glanced at talked about a certain number of apps from the Google Play Store that needed to be pulled because those apps weren't even games. They were just malware disguised as games. They would crash your phone or something like that, but they would add bad software onto it. Apart from that, you don't have to look very far at all to see all sorts of garbage apps and copycats, pay to win traps, and just other bad practices that are designed not for entertainment, but just to take your money. However, for all the bad that is, I don't think that really defines the mobile app or the mobile gaming industry. It just defines the most jagged and rough of its edges. You might have known this already about me, but I've worked as a third-party quality assurance lead for a number of years. During this time, I've seen hundreds of games. Dozens among those have been ports of mobile games that have come. I've seen more than one instance where these so-called free-to-play games end up causing users to spend tens of thousands of dollars only to get nowhere. Pretty much. However, there are clear rules on how to conduct these games, otherwise they would be rejected and they wouldn't see the light of day. So for example, while you can plunk down a whole lot of money to jump ahead of the competition, it's not going to be allowed to make it so that people who don't pay any money to get into these games will find themselves to be like stopped, like they just can't progress unless they pay. That kind of stuff generally isn't allowed, but they kind of play it fast and loose on the mobile marketplaces still. So there's still a lot of room for uh, for the gaming for the mobile gaming industry to mature. Because for the sake of its own survival and the billions of dollars that uh, this industry is down, is bound to take in, uh, they need to kind of get their shit together. Not everyone owns a console, just like not everyone owns a high-end PC or a mobile phone. But there's a pretty good chance that you probably own at least one of those things. So that's a lot of reach, thanks to more powerful computers and phones and, and consoles. And of course, with faster high-speed internet that allows plenty of apps to come down the pipe, there's going to be a lot of garbage included in that too. I've seen a lot of negative response about mobile gaming uh, lately, ever since November. It sort of sums up to this following sentence. Mobile games are low quality, low effort garbage that siphons talent from otherwise good developers and money from gullible consumers. I don't disagree with that statement. However, at the same time, I've seen a lot of games that don't meet certain criteria and I classify all these games into, well, they suck. Personally, I would rather live in a world where games just don't suck, where players such as you and I can go about and choose the games that we want to play, but ignore the ones that we don't want to play. 
where we don't have to lash out against studios and developers who make these games just because on this particular year, our expectations weren't met. It's been a little bit cringy, but kind of commendable seeing the pushback from, you know, the gamers rise up camp uh, ever since Alan Adams statements early November. These players are like the old god standing against the darkness, resisting changes that they don't like, but at the same time, you know, they're being understandably and rightfully fearful. But that's where I find it hard for myself to just stand alongside them like a loyal sheep, as if resisting the mobile industry is what a good PC gamer should do. It's because I, like so many others, I, I happen to play games on my phone. And sometimes, sometimes I give them money because I'm having a good time. I don't think it makes me a traitor. I don't think that it puts me on some pedestal like I can stand up like I'm a real gamer or that I'm better than anybody. So I'm sort of looking forward to what Blizzard is going to come out with in their first solo mobile gaming release. And, and I say that because Hearthstone is more like a part of a PC game and the whole partnership to get the Diablo uh, Immortal release. OK, that's kind of an excuse. Sorry. Diablo Immortal is, in fact, a good example of a game that that definitely crosses the line for me. And I don't need to wait for the full release or someone else's review. I don't need to know the pay model. I don't need to know the expansion plan or how to port it from the phone to some PC emulator. It's because of what Diablo Immortal is. It defines the biggest problem that I personally have with mobile gaming. And this goes way back to the ancient days of the Game Boy. Once upon a time, the Game Boy was pitched as taking, you know, the console experience and the excitement from home and putting it into the palm of your hand. It never took for me, but clearly there's a market for it. Otherwise, Square Enix wouldn't be churning out crappy ports of their Final Fantasy games. In practice, though, I don't think that this sort of experience is something that I want to have on a phone and putting in so much effort it's trying to uh, take the home experience and put it onto mobile uh, is, is not a good approach. I feel strongly that the best approach to developing games on the mobile platform is to play on the strengths of the platform itself. And not to try transferring the full console or PC experience onto like a little tiny screen with with fangled controls. If I wanted to immerse myself in a big sprawling world with other players around me, I'm going to do it at home and not while I'm in line at a Starbucks. If I want to get a few headshots in, I'm going to feel hindered by uh, the really tiny screen and my big old thumbs getting in the way. I get that Diablo Immortal is more like a response uh, for a market like China who is looking for that kind of game. And I think that's fine. If you want to make money, yeah, definitely go do it. However, that's merely a response and just fulfilling a need. Uh, Blizzard, uh, Blizzard games in the past have a reputation of not fulfilling needs, but creating them. If Blizzard doubles down on what is cool about mobile gaming and creates some really cool IPs from it, then they can possibly capture an incredibly large audience. All that Diablo Immortal does is it does respond to a market. However, it also alienates another market that was expecting that kind of experience to come to them. As in, you know, we wanted Diablo 4, but we didn't get it, so we're pissed off. So I'm going to use myself as an example. I'm just one person, OK? And um, the, the kind of games that I like to play on the phone are I, I just need to have my attention grabbed for just a few minutes at a time. That experience, just the several minutes in the middle of a busy day, that's something that you can't really capture on uh, on a console or a PC experience where you got to sit down, load everything up get onto the program, log in, and so on and so forth. For the most part on the phone, it's just hit the app and you're pretty much in. Hearthstone was an easy and successful entry that they just ported from PC. There's the genre of idle RPGs where you have characters just kind of going in one direction and your job as the user is to just kind of maintain it and, uh, and, and direct them. That's the kind of game that's designed to function without the user actually looking at the screen. Pokemon Go is probably the best example where you take an existing franchise um, and as, as well as use a, a fairly what I would call a less divisive monetization system. But you also take advantage of what the series is and apply it to what a mobile device can do. You can't play Pokemon Go on, uh, you know, on a console or, or a PC. And that's the kind of direction that I want to see Blizzard go in. And maybe that's why they've been reported to be doing so. 
Now I've seen plenty of pushback about how Blizzard shouldn't be spending any development time working on, working on mobile stuff when they could be working on other franchises or supporting the current game. And I get that, while at the same time I want to try to respect that these developers are, are creators, that they're people too. If you allow these creative talents to expand and otherwise move on to different projects if they need to, as, as the reports are suggesting, that's how we get games like Hearthstone, and from the looks of things that's what Blizzard is trying to recreate. So on the flip side, I question whether or not it's a good idea to otherwise cage developers into a project that they may no longer be interested in because one, it might compromise on the quality and two, it just might make that person leave and go off to where they can find some better opportunity. But I don't know. I'm being typical me, I'm going all over the place, but I just want to I just want to say that I know that Diablo Immortal is going to make money, uh, but I wouldn't call the development of that game a step forward. I am both excited and nervous to see what they have coming out and when it does, you know, tune in right here because I'll be here to talk about it. So thanks for watching and listening and I'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy.